Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. More people search online for help with the IELTS speaking test than for any other part of the IELTS exam. And many candidates say that it's the part they fear most. But there's nothing to worry about if you're well prepared. The first step of being well prepared is to understand what the speaking test is all about. Most people think they know, but they've got it wrong. And I don't want this to be you. That's why I've created this video. I want you to go into the exam knowing exactly what's required so that you get the best possible score you're capable of achieving. Here's an outline of what we'll be covering. One, the format of the speaking test, parts one, two and three. Two, the four key skills you'll be assessed on. Three, the main reason for low scores and four, how to avoid this big mistake. First, some basic information. The speaking test is the same for both the academic and the general IELTS exam. Your test will take place either on the same day as your writing, listening and reading tests, which are taken together, or seven days before or after them. The speaking test lasts for 11 to 14 minutes and is made up of three parts. So let's take a look at these three different parts of the test, starting with part one. It will last for four to five minutes and you'll be asked questions about you and your life. They could include anything connected with the following topics. Your work or study, your home, your family, your hometown, your likes or dislikes. These questions will be easy to answer as you obviously know all about yourself and your life. You can't give a wrong answer, so try to relax and treat this as a warm up for the rest of the test. Part two will take three to four minutes. The examiner will give you a cue card with a topic written on it, along with three to five bullet points telling you what to include in your talk. You'll be asked to speak on this topic for up to two minutes. The examiner may then ask you a few questions about your topic. You'll be given one minute preparation time before you have to start speaking. During this time, you're allowed to make notes, which you can refer to while you're talking. The topic can be almost anything, but will again be related to you in some way. For example, something about you, something that has happened to you, something you have experienced. Here's an example of a cue card. Describe a party you have been to. You should say whose party it was, where the party was held, who was there, and explain what you did at the party. The topic is stated in the first sentence. In this case, it's a party you've been to. The three bullet points and final clause are a guide as to what you should talk about but you don't have to stick rigidly to them. I've created several web pages and videos about how to answer part two questions. I've put a link to the website in the notes below this video. Check out my YouTube channel for the videos about this. The final part of the speaking test, part three, lasts for four to five minutes. The examiner will ask you questions related to the topic on your cue card that you talked about in part two. These questions will be more abstract in nature to encourage you to explore ideas and concepts rather than just relating facts. It will be more of a dialogue between you and the examiner, which will give you the opportunity to express your thoughts and feelings about the topic or to develop your ideas. For our party topic, these are the sorts of part three questions you might get. When do people usually have parties in your country? What makes a good party? How important is it to celebrate important events with a group of people? Why do some people not enjoy going to parties? How do people in your country usually mark the new year? Do you think that festivals or celebrations are over-commercialised 
or have lost their original meaning? Now that you understand the format of the speaking test, I want to explain a key reason why many people get a low score and how to avoid this mistake. One of the main reasons people do badly in their IELTS speaking test is that they don't understand what's actually required and what the examiner is looking for. If you don't know what the examiner wants, how can you give it to them? I'll start by making it clear what the speaking test is not. Here are the key points you need to know. It is not a test of your knowledge or your intelligence. You are not expected to be an expert on the subjects they ask you about. You won't be assessed on the content of what you say. The examiner doesn't care what you do or do not know about your subject. They just want to hear your opinions and how well you communicate them. That's it. So, you are not expected to have lots of knowledge on the subjects you're asked about. You're not taking a master's degree, you're taking an English speaking test. The content of what you say is not important and you won't be assessed on it. In fact, you can even make something up if you need to. With that out of the way, let's have a look at what you will be assessed on. The examiners follow strict marking criteria. I'll go into the specifics in the next slide, but here are the things the IELTS speaking test is designed to assess your ability to do. Communicate opinions and information on everyday topics and common experiences. Speak at length on a given topic using appropriate language. Organise your ideas coherently. Express and justify your opinions and analyse, discuss and speculate about issues. There are just four key skills that you'll actually be marked on. Fluency and coherence, vocabulary, grammar and pronunciation. These are all you need to worry about. They each hold 25% of the marks. Fluency and coherence. What do these terms mean? Fluency is the ability to speak easily, naturally and at a good speed without lots of stops, pauses or repetition. And coherency is the way that ideas are organised, developed and connected so that they flow from one to another logically and what is said makes sense. Both are important. Next, vocabulary. To do well in the IELTS exam, you need to show the ability to correctly use a wide range of vocabulary. I've highlighted the word correctly because many people make the mistake of thinking that they just have to throw in lots of advanced and complex words to get a high score for the vocabulary. The result is speech that's full of inappropriate words and phrases used incorrectly and sentences that are difficult to understand. That's the perfect recipe for a low score. The examiner doesn't want you to try and be clever and include the most advanced vocabulary you can think of. They want you to use the right or the most appropriate words and phrases to answer the question. You don't want to sound like a university professor giving a lecture, just a normal person talking in everyday language. This is so important. You'll find lots of help with learning vocabulary for IELTS in the vocabulary section of my website, ieltsjackie.com. The third key skill you'll be assessed on is grammar. Here are three important points to note. First, most people try to overcomplicate grammar. Second, you should try to use the most appropriate language to answer each question. Third, the questions are designed to assess your ability to use different tenses. Obviously, you need to understand and correctly use the different verb tenses. Indeed, the questions you'll be asked are designed to test your ability to use a range of tenses and other grammatical structures. However, as with everything else in the IELTS speaking test, you need to be able to use the most appropriate language for any given question. The examiner won't be impressed if you try to use three different tenses in your answer just to show that you can, when really they don't belong there. 
your speech will automatically lose coherence and you'll thus lose marks doing this. Finally, pronunciation. The most important aspect of pronunciation to get right is clarity, which means being clear and easy to understand. If the examiner can't understand you when you talk, they have no way of assessing your English language skills. The clarity of your speech is determined to a large extent by these five features of pronunciation. Individual sounds, word stress, sentence stress, connected speech and intonation. Major grammar errors and incorrect vocabulary will also, of course, make it more difficult to understand you, but good pronunciation enables you to show off all your other language skills. So now that you know exactly what the examiner will be looking for when you take your exam, you're already better prepared than most people. Bearing all this information in mind, what you need to do now is practice answering lots of IELTS style questions. You'll find plenty of these on the website. I've included practice questions on each of the topic vocabulary pages to help you learn the appropriate vocabulary at the same time. You'll find links to them on all the speaking pages of the website. Also, download my 30 free mock speaking tests, which include 30 practice cards on 30 topics. That's 330 questions altogether. You'll find them via the link to the speaking section of the website in the notes below. Well, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.